Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the more survivalists and in this case doing a video that was requested through Instagram. Mine is Fairfall 308. It's gonna be there below if you wanna follow me on Instagram. Every now and then I post something and if you wanna send me questions and such, when I have the time, it's not always, but as as time allows, I try to answer them. Now this is something I was asking on Instagram regarding self-defense. The person that contacted me was asking about self-defense for women in a, in a city in Argentina where there's having more, more problems with, with stalkers, with that sort of thing, attacks on women. But basically this same thing applies to pretty much uh, anyone, men, uh, women or, or men alike. You know, basic stuff regarding self-defense uh, while out and about on the street. So there's several things to, to consider, keep in mind. A lot of this has been covered to some extent, or qu actually a lot of it has been covered in my latest book, Street Survival Skills. And I do address, you know, stalkers and, and people you know, going after women. It's unfortunate, but it, it is a thing. Some some creeps definitely like doing that sort of thing. You also have um, you, you have muggers, you, you have criminals, but also you have these kind of, of perverts that go after women. And some of these things apply to guys as well. If you have someone chasing after you, someone looking for a fight, or, or just a, a sociopath, a psychopath. A lots of lots of these things still apply, and I cover quite a bit of that here. And the link for it's going to be there below. So the basic advice is usually the same. Try to avoid dangerous situations, dangerous uh, people in, in dangerous places. Um, you may have heard something similar to avoid stupid people, stupid places, or stupid situations. It's basically all the same. You just try to avoid um, circumstances in which your well-being may be at risk. So you don't go to you know um, the, the shady part of town. You don't go to you know, parties with people you don't know, and there's going to be you know, maybe folks there that are not the right kind of people to hang around with, going to bars late at night, especially some of the more, more shady ones. If you do all of this, there's, you're going to be avoiding like 90% of the potential situations in which you may be at risk. Having said that, there may be times in which, in, in spite of your best efforts, no matter what you do, you're still at risk. So a lot of this will be, um, lots of the things that you actually can do will depend on the legality of it, if you're allowed to have a concealed carry a fire with you or not or a, or a pepper spray or a knife keep in mind there's places where you cannot even have pepper spray in 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 london for example this would be just as bad as having this you know stupid laws yes but that's the way it is if you have um pepper spray it is considered it is considered a firearm actually in 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 parts of the world specifically in in england it's going to be considered a firearm even if it has nothing to do with a firearm that's just the way it is and you're going to be landing in jail for it so know your local laws in spite of everything that I'm saying here know your local laws and adapt as well as you can to them now of course, if you have a firearm and you're receiving the right training for it, training is key. You know, if you don't have the right training, especially with a firearm, the more complex the tool is, the more training you will re it will require. Something like a firearm requires uh, a realistic amount of training and, and proficiency and practice with some frequency so as to be good with it. Because if not, it you know, sure, there's people that without any kind of, of training or very little, when what, what would be considered by most like no training. On, on firearms use whatsoever, they are still capable of defending themselves successfully. That is pushing it really. I recommend at the very least having at least one good class with a, with a qualified instructor on offensive use of firearm if you're going to be carrying it. Now there's a lot of other things that you can actually do as well and some of these tools I have them here and of course a lot of this again with training if you're going to be it, practicing some self-defense system, all of that helps a great deal. Um, but there's also certain tools that you can incorporate that will give you an edge. One of the more basic ones, and these are just, these are actually for my wife, the knife and these, um, a flashlight is a great tool to have at all times, especially if you have like a person, you have the possibility of having something bigger or in your pocket as part of your EDC. But this one was clearly designed as a, um, as a flashlight for, for women, for ladies. And you even have the, 
like a striking bezel. It is not very sharp, but it is sharp enough. So this is something that will not be pleasant to get hit with. But most of all, the light. Now, there's a lot of, of marketing involved with a tactical flashlight, the strobe, how it blinds people. I'm not so sure that it blinds people nearly as much as in marketing sometimes lets you know uh, or lets you to believe. But I will tell you this, that if you are in a dark alley or a street or in a parking lot and you happen to see someone suspicious, you turn it on, you illuminate in that direction or towards that person, it's going to be changing several things. First of all, you're no longer a completely helpless victim like your predator probably was hoping for. All of a sudden, you have a tool. All of a sudden, you are making yourself, um, you're putting yourself in a position of, of, uh, of more power by acknowledging that person over there, illuminating them, putting them literally on the spotlight. That changes the psychology of this interaction right away. People uh, don't usually have this kind of, of tools with them. And when a predator all of a sudden finds himself that you do, hey, maybe I made the wrong choice here. Maybe I'm going after someone that probably is a little bit more prepared than I hope he would, he or she would be. She has a flashlight. Maybe she has a gun as well. I don't know, but I'm not liking what I'm seeing. That changes things uh, from the get-go. It also illuminates what you're looking at. You can actually see the person's face. That person will not be able to look to Towards you as comfortably as if you if you didn't have the light. So a light, by all means, is something you definitely want to get. These tiny ones, these are great, but you know what? You don't have the clicky function, which you definitely want on a um, on a flashlight for this kind of use. So go for a clicky, a little bit of a strike bezel. You have different models, and of course, you have the surefires that cost like a hundred bucks. Those are great. I'll leave the link for those below if you want to get those. Sure, they cost quite a bit more money, but they're very powerful, very strong. But you can. Have have these ones as well and you can find them all over the place you know probably most of the stores and grocery stores and such you will find something that somewhat fills the bill remember something compact enough to actually carry but with a clicky button that is easy to access that's going to be changing things already your pepper spray is also a very useful tool it's maybe one of the more useful tools for self-defense regarding this kind of encounter the the this the stock or the creep, the pervert, or even the guy just looking for a fight. You know, the, the famous road rage incident in which a guy just crosses the vehicle and gets out of the car. Hey, what's going on? And you just don't want to pick a fight. You even don't want to use your gun, but you have a pepper spray. You can use that to you know defend yourself without using lethal force. So pepper spray is definitely a good addition. Then you have knives as well, which um, do they require training? Yeah, maybe, maybe not, depending on how lucky you are as well and how determined you are as well. A knife is usually a, a weapon of, uh, of determination. And by that I mean, if someone really wants to get at you with a knife, that's usually gonna be enough to be in, serious, in, in a serious uh, uh, problem. Problem. There's been cases in which guys have gone after police officers with, with guns and with obviously no training whatsoever, just a lot of will to cause a lot of harm on a police officer, they've unfortunately been very successful at that. The same applies to someone that is in a self-defense situation. So you had your, your flashlight, you don't have a gun because of whatever legal um, restrictions you have. You use a flashlight, you use an OC spray, this guy is still on top of you, he just threw you on the floor and he's on top of you and you have your folder, you bring it out and you use it so as to open up you know, maybe that, that bell that person's belly and defend yourself as best as you can in that last ditch re uh, fight. You know, that's the kind of situation in which you would be using this. Now, is it something that can be used for someone that has a little bit more training and you bring it out and you make yourself, um, you, you put yourself clearly in that position, you know, I, I just don't want to fight you, keep your distance, stay away from me, and that person decides, yeah, he's she's not worth getting cut over, so I'm going to be staying away from her because she has a knife. I was not expecting that, I don't like that. She has a flashlight, she has a knife, yeah, maybe uh, I just picked the wrong person to mess with. Same thing applies to guys as well. You have other options as well you have these tiny little um, knives that are very successful at that because you uh, you have um, this is actually a great option for uh, for a woman because this is almost impossible to uh, get that knife away from you you are just gripping it in this manner and anything that you touch that is re regarding the, the blade is likely to cut you so and it applies very well to some of the striking that you may, may be practicing in some defensive classes that you may have taken so it applies to some of the boxing stand 
hands and some punches. It is definitely something good that um, can be used quite successfully. Um, a bigger folder, a, another type of flashlight shirt. One of these alarms, I've talked about these before. I think they're a great idea. Um, they're very loud. You remove the little tab for the, for the battery and you remove this other thing, which the idea would be to attach this to uh, your purse, your bag, your briefcase, whatever it is that you have with you, or just keep it in your pocket. And as soon as you pull this, it starts going very, very loudly. It is actually painful to be next to it. And that is one of the things. That is yet another thing, like the flashlight. It's something that a, that a, that a criminal, a, 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 um, a social predator will not like. She, he's not going to be expecting you to bring that out and have a loud noise, you know, you know, all eyes on you with something like this. Um, one of the things I've read about is that in some of these cases in which women are attacked and surprised or you know, being struck by a... a by, by an attacker, maybe a, a, a rapist or something like that is, um, the, the fear, the shock, uh, women talk about one, wanting to scream out, but being in so much of a shock that they, they, they try to scream, but they cannot, the, the sound does not leave their, their, their you know, they, they cannot scream out in, 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 in help because of the shock in which they are in. This is something that you just have to pull it. There's no um, effort in, in a similar manner as to, you know, shouting, or using a whistle, this is a lot more effective as a sound alarm than shouting out for help. So keep that in mind. Then you have some knives that are really not all that tactical or anything. The Holta Force, the Moras, and yet, man, these are very decent blades for self-defense as well. It has a very nice grip. It has a very pointy blade. If it's sharpened properly or if it's brand new, it's going to be cutting like few knives out there. And um, yeah, it's not, you know, it's an orange, it's a big old <laughs> orange hand handled a working knife, but it can be used very effectively uh, as a weapon as well, if that's what you you have. So folks, just a few ideas, a few things for you guys to, to you guys and you gals to keep a, in mind. Um, some of the things that you may want to incorporate and, and try to practice with a little bit, especially with a pepper spray, you have some of those that are throwing a liquid, so as to practice that aim. So yes, remember today, 3 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to be talking with, with Matt Bracking as, as as, as we've been doing uh, these last uh, last weekends, having great conversations. If you want to join us, then you're more than welcome. And that's going to be all for now. Subscribe to the channel. See you on the next video. Have an awesome day.